I got to tour with Bounty Killer, Lady Patra, Round Head and Ninja Kid. What, what it was, my dad's friend was the a r for Lady Patra. My dad's friend, Byron Jr. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So how, he, oh, and wow. you know what he did? He was, Byron used to come down from New York and link my dad. And Byron had his his house in in Hartford, Connecticut, mm-hmm. but he used to work at the office with okay. specialists okay. who was Shabaranks' manager. That's mad. Specialist. And he was Patra's manager. And he was the one that was running that whole thing, specialist and banky. Oh, yeah. Dude, you had just walked into an opportunity so, to dive. Well, I didn't know. I was walking. I just knew this guy, Byron, who was my dad's friend. And he heard I could do music. But guess what he did? He called me from the office when he was with Banky and them. Didn't tell me. Put me on loudspeaker. Loud and he goes, yo, give me your lyrics now. <laughs> On the yeah, phone? on the phone. Yeah, he goes, yo, I'm just there in the office. I mean, I talk about you. Give me some, give me your lyrics. I gave him three lyrics. I gave him a sing J style, a sing song, and then a fast tongue DJ thing. Yo. And then the next day, my dad goes, the yo. The third one, they miss, you must have nailed it in the bag. And then my dad said to me, yo, you know what Byron did to you? I was like, what? He goes, you know, you was on the speakerphone and Banky and everything. Then no. they, they put you on that show. I was like, which show? Said the Bounty Killer and things. So I was like, that's don't lie. Crazy. And that was the first time Bounty Killer came to America. Killer Killer Official dot com. Street Culture TV. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Killer podcast. Send it up the flagpole and see who salutes it. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast. We are live and direct central London or as central as you need to be. It's that time again. Um, big shout out to all the sharers and carers. People have been supporting us from the jump. Um, goes without saying, your support means everything. And without it, we ain't got it. So, uh, yeah, big up all of that. Our sponsors, the mighty GK Nifty Heads, have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gkniftyheads.com and get ready for Hot Awards Summer 2024. <laughs> Inside the house. Oh, my goodness. When we talk about history, yeah, me and my friend, we go back in a collaborative way. This is a man of collaboration. The man like DJ Vadim or Benny Page, uh, drum and bass, right there across the board. <coughs> the lovers in you, the ragger, and more. The vocalist, the lyricist, the North London representative. The man that should be in pictures but isn't. And we'll get more into that. <laughs> Demolition man. <laughs> How are you? Uh, how are you doing, brother? I'm blessed, man. You good? It's so good to have you on. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here, yeah. bro. Only, only 500 later. I thought you were in the first few. But, uh, you know, time, time prevails. <laughs> Nothing before the time. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing before the time. Uh, yeah, so just uh, let's to recap. So if you're uh, watching... And, uh, and not listening or not listening or watching, uh, on the board here, we have Mr. Norsky's Darker Shades of White. Um, please allow, explain more, <laughs> Demo. Tell us what you just told me before we started. <laughs> well, like I was saying, it's, uh, it's funny that this iconic picture here yes. from the, um, the album Million Dan and Demon Boys, basically. Crazy. Yeah. Um, I was on the song Please Don't Sift No Coke, that one there. Mm-hmm. Don't touch it. Mm-hmm. And um, I was meant to go and take the picture and I couldn't go because I was in school. I was 14 and mum said, no, nope, you're not allowed to go and take no picture for no record cover. What are you talking about? <laughs> no record cover, education. You mean music. <laughs> and guess what? Who's supporting my music right now? Mum's yeah, in it. Yeah, of course. Of course, standard. But yeah, recognition, mate. I didn't get to go on this picture here, this iconic picture. But I'm on the album. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's more than enough iconic moves there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, talk about, I mean, the classic car as well. That's I'm Ford telling you. Sierra, isn't uh, it? And it's, 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 it's funny. It's this year, actually, somebody put that picture up on Instagram. And it's only th- um, this year. Wow. Um, I see that picture. Wow. Because I haven't seen the album. I had the copy and I lent it to somebody. Uh-huh. I never got it back. Ah. Same thing with my Fire one. My really? Fire, yeah. I had to get a copy um, of somebody. Somebody gave me a back. I, haven't, I had an original copy. I lent it to somebody and never got it back. Isn't that the way? Why do people <laughs> do that to me? Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> um, what does it make you think when you look at that picture? I mean, does it take you back to a certain time? I mean, yeah. we might as well start there, right? It takes me back to 19... In the 80s, man. 1983, 84. Wow. I mean, yeah, I was 14. Wow. 14, yeah. Yeah, them times, man. 81. Wow. Yeah, 81. Man. Yeah, man. London was a very different London back there. Yeah, man. Yeah. Very, very different London. Yeah. What, what was North London like? Boy. Um, 
Would you be for, it was like, I was more, look, a lot of people don't really know. I'm originally from Hackney. I'm born in Hackney. Really? Yeah, I was going to school in Hackney, but I moved to Tottenham. Well, we moved to Tottenham 1983. 83. 83, we moved to Tottenham, but I was still going to school in Homerton House in Hackney. Yeah, Homerton House, uh, Homerton Crew. Yeah, Homerton yeah. House. And then um, I went to my primary school, was, my first primary school was um, Jubilee. On um, Kazanoff Road. Uh huh, Kazanoff Road, yeah. Kazanoff Road, Stoke New Inn. So, Newton, I know that very well. I used to live on there. My doctor's still there. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. still go to the same doctor. And then um, I went to uh, Millfield's primary school. Mm. And then I went to um, Hummerton House. But I was living in Seaford Road, Tottenham. Right by the RUZ Centre. So, I don't know about the RUZ Centre. Mm. Yeah, Seaford Road. But I was taking the bus going to school. So, a lot of people, because I grew up actually, and a lot of my family mm. was in North London. Mm -hmm. So, I, because I grew up in North London, a lot of people think that I'm originally from Tottenham yeah, yeah, because yeah. I rep Tottenham, you know what I mean? Yeah. But if you listen to my songs, I rep East London and yeah, North yeah, London. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. There's a relationship that is, in fact, you know, strange. You said all those places you just ruled off that you you, uh, you lived in or, you know, aboded previously, I lived there. <laughs> so, Homerton, mm. I pretty much stayed with my uh, um, then music producer, Spider J. Okay. And you know Spider J? I don't know him personally, but I know, you know him. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then Casanova Road, I lived on Casanova Road. Yeah, right, yeah. 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 I used to get loads of kudos by saying, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm Casanova Road. You know. So you know Mandela House? Yeah, of course. That's where I used to live. But it wasn't, called, it wasn't called Mandela House, it was called Morley House. Really? That's like when I, yeah, that's where um, I was, my nursery, yeah, I was born in Mother's Hospital and then, yeah, Casanova K K K K K Road. That's Morley okay. House, which is now Mandela House. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. Imagine that. It's Mandela? Yeah, see it there? Boom! <laughs> see it there? All <laughs> oh, right. There, there we man. go, see it? Never. All this serendipity is all clicking in together. Yeah, man, it? for real, man. Um, how did you, why? How come you got the music bug? What, what was it? Mum and dad. Right. Yeah, because um, they love to play music, in it. My dad, um, um, I didn't really actually see my dad in the sound system, but mm. I saw a picture of my dad holding a microphone. Oh. And he was in a suit, he looked sharp. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's enough so to inspire, right? My mum said to me that, yeah, he was in a sound. Um, what was the sound name? Um, was it called? Was it, no, was it Serena, I think? I'm not sure. Really? Yeah, Serena think, sound? Yeah, I think it was that. And then, Get your um, Google on, have yeah, a look. And I yeah, and um, I saw this black and white picture of my dad holding a microphone. Oh, yeah, that's enough. Yeah, and he had in a suit, but my dad looked sharp. And I was like, wow. But then, yeah, every... Sunday or every day, like for driving with my dad, he's got music on. And my dad's favorite singers were like Gregory Isaac, <laughs> Dennis Brown, um, Burning Spear, wow. obviously Bob, yeah, Alton Ellis. And you were just absorbed in all of that. Yeah, so my mum used to love Alton Ellis. And really? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I used to hear a lot of Studio One being played on, Bet a, you sun did, yeah. on a Sunday as well. On a Sunday too. Plus my grandma as well. She used to love soca. So she used to play, oh. she's, that's the Jamaican side. Yeah. My mum's from Barbados. Okay. My dad's from Jamaica, but my grandmother used to listen to a lot of gospel music as well. But, uh, you know, like, um, and then she used to listen to Smokey Robinson. So it was like all, Beautiful. it was like I used to get all round. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then um, I think what it was, I used to dance. I used to love dancing. So when we used to go out, my mum, when we used to go around at family gatherings, mm -hmm. I used, we used to have like little dancing competitions. Or really? They would always tell me to dance. So it's you, almost like encouraged to, you know, that kind of self confidence of yeah, just doing it. Yeah, so I used to just dance and, you know what yeah. I mean, and then uh, I, I think it was around seven years old, <laughs> um, I started to play the piano and, uh, and, the, and the drums. But I used to get free lessons from my next door neighbour. Wow. Because what it was, um, my school was across the road from my house, Milford School, um, Rushmore Road. Yeah, and um, I used to live right by the back of Clapton School on Mayola Road. In, in Hackney? In Hackney. Yeah. And my mum used to finish work maybe like five o'clock, so you know school ended yeah, at three, yeah, yeah, yeah. three o'clock. Yeah. So I used to go next door. But it's only like two days of the week she used to finish that time. So I used to go next door to my next door neighbour. <laughs> and they were music instructors. Really? Well, so drums and you, piano? Yeah, so I used to get free lessons. That's incredible. Yeah, Mr Chandler. I'll pick up Mr yeah. Chandler. Yeah, Everyone man, needs Mr. a good Chandler. teacher. Yeah, and Richard and, and his children, they used to teach as well. <laughs> they used to play Richard and they could play music fluent. Really? Yeah, they played the piano fluently. How are you so, on the ivories? You... Well, I used to be able to read. Uh, I used to be able to read and everything. I can't read now. Wow. I play by ear. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, but you, in the script, you'd be able to, you'd be able to. Yeah, and guitar mean, as well. Yeah, I used to play, um, just play the guitar. But I used to just play it by ear. I used to just make it about and just. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? just Versatility on the I mean. podcast, years like instrumental. I think when 
break dancing came in mm. and body popping mm. came in. I got into the body popping cool, and sir. break dancing and um I won a competition at Langham School huh? when I was around I think around twelve, thirteen. Well for body popping. For body popping. That's I came it. first a body popping competition. Like even Congo Netty and them was there. Really? Same time he was in a sound called Beat Freak. Yeah, he was a um, Beat UK... Freak. Yeah. Ah, there was a sound called it. Beat Freak. And his sound was playing that night there as well. And I actually, I used to be spinning on my head, do the whole shit. Wow. Yeah. Them times I had the wet look. Yeah. <laughs> the afro. Really, and then really? I spin on my head, I left a big grease patch. Really? <laughs> really, really? It's really. a yeah. signature move. Uh, yeah, but I've still got the medal <laughs> at home, man. My little small medal, man. For, um, so basically, that's how I actually got into the music on that side. And then when we was around, I think it was around 9, 10 in school, we made a, um, a cassette tape with around 70 songs on it. We made it ourselves. <laughs> that was the first time I ever went to a studio because our teacher, Miss um, Clarkins, she took us to, she got the, um, the whole class to go to a studio. <laughs> and what it was, we made the songs before we went there. And it's all. I kind of rehearsed them. But it was a Casio, mm. one of them Casio keyboards. Mm-hmm. And you know, you've got the program, you've got the rumba, the samba, bossa nova. Bossa yeah. nova. <laughs> so we used those beats and then added to it. And you know, sometimes you can just press it and it triggers the keys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we knew what songs we were going to do. And then I think about maybe, because even a couple of them I made up. I made up some of the, about two of them, I made up the keys myself. No way. Yeah. And then the last two songs on the. On the cassette was Musical Youth. Yeah, please. Um, I, I passed the dodgy on the left hand side. Yeah. So nah. we went to the studio, nah. recorded that. I remember it was a black cassette tape. Yeah. I think we got it. It's, it's in Canada right now. It's in a bag. Wow. And um, when we recorded that, put it, we distributed it in the local sweet shop <clears throat> and it got sold. I can't remember. If, I don't know if it was like a pound, yeah, yeah. a pound, like 25 yeah, pence yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And then we actually got called to go on the South Bank show. No. To perform what? right down by London Bridge, what? right by the side by the South Bank at the side, but it wasn't televised, but it was a like a day thing that yeah. they had for performances, wow. and we performed down there. <gasps> yeah, they did, we did. I did. They, they didn't film us, but they filmed the whole event and mentioned it on TV That's on the incredible. news. Incredible. Yeah. Set off a fire. Yeah. So and then from there, I think. Um, me personally, when I started to do my own lyrics. Was when I went to Jamaica because I used to go to Jamaica f- with my grandmother from the age of seven to thirteen. Wow! Really? And I think thirteen is when I got the bug. Really? When I saw Papa San and Lieutenant Stitchy. What in uh, in Jamaica? Yeah, Stereo One, oh, and they really? were DJing um, for, uh, on a calypso rhythm. Really? And then times there, uh, you know, you had thirty three, mm. forty five, <laughs> and and you yeah, speed it up yeah, in yeah. it, and they speeded it up to seventy three. Oh wow! So it was a soul tune. I remember the soul tune. It was like, <laughs> and then San went, "Buck the rhythm up to seventy three. Oh my god! <laughs> the crowd must have gone off. What? It's just me and my dad standing there, and I was like thirteen. This is the first time I ever seen this in my Blew life. Blew my mind. Blew my mind. I was like, yeah, I want to do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Went back to England and on my door, on my bridging's doorstep, Tintin, right there. That was my best friend, man. No way. Tintin, right on his doorstep. In the picture, right. Me and him made our first lyric together. Wow. On his doorstep. Changed everything. Changed everything, man. We were then, his brother was in, his brother and his cousin, them family had a family sound that played at like parties and Mm -hmm. christenings and it was called um, Nice and Easy. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the first Mm -hmm. sounds I was on Mm -hmm. doing my thing and then, yeah, went on from there, man. The rest is history. Yeah, in thing, sound and, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you're, Catalogue of collaborations. It's, it's so funny how I discovered. I mean, you know, when I say collaboration, I think we jammed with each other on stage. I remember yeah, yeah, that very, yeah, very well. Yeah, we yeah. don't have battles a bunch of times. But one significant one was definitely DJ Vadim, who oh, introduced me yeah, to. Yes, I heard of you from DJ Vadim. I was yeah, like, yeah. What? This yeah. guy can yeah. beat what? <laughs> and then I think I heard you one. It was a telephone. You done, you done, a, yeah, yeah. You done a telephone commercial. Didn't That's you? right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, <laughs> this guy's bad. Oh, bless you. <laughs> Thank you, brother. No, it was. It, it was mutual, and um, when I first heard you, I was just like, Yo, this is the energy, energy. Uh, how you convey tone, attack, it's like a level of vibrancy to your vocals, man. It's like, you can't, it, it, <laughs> you hear it, it's like, you can tell when Demo's really into a track. Yeah. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. You can tell when I'm feeling it. Yeah, yeah you feel it because it, it comes from there, mate. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just a, it's a it's a it's an essence, an yeah. energy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, would you believe it was around two thousand and I would say no ninety seven mm. is when I first got that feeling. Mm. You know mm. where I like <clears throat> it's like I was out of my body, yeah. and I was working with Johnny Osborne. That was ninety seven. Yeah, and I wrote this song, Soldier on the Battlefield. Mm. That's when I was like, ooh, it's like another level. Really? You just felt something yeah, hit? Yeah, something dead different. I like, got goosebumps on my own like, voice and mm. just do my own shit, you know what I mean? Right, that's an interesting angle. So it, with, with artists, it's very often hard for them to disconnect themselves to the tune and almost hear it from a, a listener's perspective. And to, you know, bless your hearts. If you ain't got it, though, you ain't got it. And like what you just expressed there is this innate way that I think great artists manage to detach themselves and understand how you're serving the song. Yeah, 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 yeah. fully. <laughs> That's the same, yep, yep. I find, it, I find that bit the hardest thing, I think, to achieve. Yeah, because sometimes I sit down and I listen, I'm like, wow. How did that, what that, yeah. where did you get that? Yeah. Like, what was you thinking? Yeah. Sometimes I go back and I listen and I'm like, jeez, <laughs> wow. Was that you? <laughs> was it me? Was that, was you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then yeah. you suddenly see almost like a, I guess it's what's like a, 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 a um, an avatar of yourself on, on the tune and in a place that could fill the hole in someone's record collection. Yeah. That's yeah. when it gets crazy, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And then what makes it even great is that I remember what I was feeling when I was doing the tune at the time. Really? Yeah. And it comes back again when I'm listening to the track. Is there a method to that? Do you have to be in a certain mood for certain songs or can you just write? It's funny because I can just write, but then you're in certain moods when you do songs, innit? Mm. Even though up to last night I was in my studio and I was listening to some songs that I'd done back in 2006, seven. Wow. Like, that ain't released yet. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I've got some rhythm tracks and I'm thinking, right, what can I put on there? Even this guy's giving me a, a rhythm track to voice. Mm. And if I can fit something new on it, I will. But then if I'm listening to it and I'm thinking that oh, I don't, a, a vibe that mm. I've done from before, obviously it's old to me, but yeah. it's new to somebody else who's going to yeah, hear it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So last night I was listening to a, a couple songs and there was this one song I was listening to. I was like, shit. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, man, it's a it's a lovely experience when you can mm. come out of the out of your body and, like you said, an avatar of yourself and mm. let me listen to your music and appreciate. You. Yeah, you know what I mean, but you're prolific as well, and and I I feel like perhaps you probably keep by more songs than you put out. <laughs> I just know that that would probably be the case. You know what it is, right? Um, um, <laughs> you're right. You're right, but. Yeah, I'm ready now to be consistent and put out songs. I, yeah. don't, I don't need to record any music for the next two, three years. If really? So you've got it all up? I've got so much, so really? much, so much songs ready to release. So obviously on my own label, I'm going to be releasing them now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My own production, you know what I mean? I'm really, obviously I've got remixes and stuff, but I'm yeah. ready to make some noise now, yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah, but you've done some mad remixes as well. Yeah. The collaboration, Benny Page. I mean, you, you kind of, you moved into Jungle so smoothly. That was um, that was because of my cousin Terry T, who made the track um, "Fire," the, the original, yeah, yeah, original of course, track. Yeah. yeah, knowledge and wisdom label, huge. Yeah, yeah, he was um, doing it from when it first came out, from before it was Jungle. First generation. Oh, so happy hardcore transition. The whole yeah. he was there from the beginning. Really, you know what I mean, yeah. and um, it, I was um, I was in America, and I think it was yeah, ninety three. Yeah. I was living in America with my dad for a year. Yeah, that's where the name Demolition Man came in, but we'll get to that. Yo, cool. Uh, I was living with my dad and 94, mm. around January, February, got a call from Terry and he was like, yo, you need to come back to England, bruv. These things mashing up the place, this yeah. jungle thing yeah, yeah. mashing up the place, yeah. bruv. You get me? I'm like, yeah, all right. And then I came back in 1994, June. <laughs> and I remember the week I came back, I saw a friend of mine, Renault, Renault James, okay. and um, Renault. and um, he said to me, "Yo, Bikey's looking for you." I'm like, "Yeah." 
Like, yeah, Bikey Dread now, that's Prisoner. Okay. Because what it was, I had voiced uh, my second tune after that one there. My second tune was 1989, a song called Pretty Looking Girl. Okay. Yeah, under the name Wayne Young. So um, <clears throat> he wanted to remix it in Jungle. Yeah, it was a song called Pretty Looking Girl, She Yab One Pretty Looking Girl. Follow me. Pretty Looking Girl, She Yab One Pretty Looking Girl. The one dance did that kick. We are done at that stand. And they find them and kiss me, they will leash out. Ah, you <laughs> see it. So I was like, boy. That's 89, bruv. It's 94 now. Like, I've got some better lyrics, man. I want to, yeah, I mean, that's what I said. Revocal it. I said, nah, man, I didn't want to revocal that. Furthermore, I'm going to bring my producer to the studio. So, brought Terry T. And we was in, was it Midled, Middleton Road in Wood Green? Uh -huh. My house up yeah. there. And went into our studio. And we came up with fire. Crazy. Yeah, that's Terry insane. produced it. And then I came up with the. Uh, the lyrics, it was uh, it was actually three different lyrics, you know. Really? The actual intro where I say, Fire on the fair bond, they play a stone, they malish and they pan, they make a vice to a nazi and young. Fire on the fair culture lighter. Right now, me, you're something for the people. True. Now, what that was like, that was like my intro for me to go into a lyric. Mm. It's like everybody had a lyric, uh, like an mm -hmm. intro at the time. It's mm -hmm. like, he had been him and we had, oh God, bad man, we kid every time. He used so it's to like do his thing. Like a motif. Right, like a motif. And then I would go into my lyrics. Yeah. And then... But they loved that. <clears throat> so I'd done that. And then you see the... That's actually... Because I was in Justice Sound. Uh. Yeah? Now, Justice Sound, there was like 15 of us. We was like the young sound of Tottenham. Now, we had me... Frisky Dan, Diamond Dagger, Paroman, Yardi, Chappers, um, boy, like Matt, Matt. Oh, yeah, run yeah, them they're, names yeah, up. They're, they're quite, there's run. quite a few of us, you know what I mean? Brilliant. And um, basically, yeah, basically, Frisky came up with a, a style, and the style was. Um, me are the road boy, Frisky Dan, right on the version, right on the redeem like a ass, but now, me are the. And then he said, you know, I'm going to do another one. This one, not the second one. To the road by Frisky Dan. Listen, no, me I read him with a rough neck mixer, man. So, what it was, when you're in a sound, you could use a man's style. Yeah. And it don't matter. Just it, it's on a trade-off that you're yeah, working yeah. together. So then I came up with... Yeah. Come to the sound of the sound. Same, so it's the same yeah. melody, same yeah. skip, skip, bop, but I just changed up the lyrics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Frisky, Sick. done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, Frisky, that's yeah, this, yeah, this I mean, is documented. Yeah, so this that's is how the fire tune came up. And then the verse, I made up the verses. I made up like five minutes yeah, in yeah. the booth. Isn't that the way? While I was in the booth, I just <laughs> the way. when I left, do you know I went really? Yeah. You know when you leave and you know, yes, yeah, I yeah. love this tune. Yeah. When I left, I was like, nah. yeah, yeah, I went really like, I went like jumping up and down and excited about yeah. it, bro. I just left the studio and thought, okay, all right. Next thing I know. Blown up. About six weeks later, I'm hearing, yo, let's jungle together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, okay, it's on the radio. I'm like, okay. And then I think it was about a good maybe six months, six months after that, then they had the Urban Shakedown re remix, mm. and that came out 1994, mm. June. This was so early. 23rd of June. Jungle, 23rd it? of June, 1994. Yeah. No, 23rd of March that came out. 23rd or the 3rd, 1994, I Good remember. Because I was numbers. Every time I was Rasta, just turned Rasta, so I'm going to numbers deep. And I looked at the numbers, like, in Trinity. Okay. Yeah, so fire came out, and then that was it for me, bro. It's was like, whoo. Yeah. Yeah, That's I just started to... That was the ticket. It opened the door for me. I didn't know it was going to... You said you said you kind of walked away a little bit. So-so. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Not Isn't knowing it's going to be my biggest tune today. Yeah. Up to this day. But how is it that we... Artists, it, it's it's the little things you do that that make all the difference, isn't it? Sure is, mate. <laughs> Just like that yeah. one thing. Uh, yeah. well, I had it. I had it with Tipper Ari actually. Told the story of um, Black Eyed Peas and the, and the fact that he just happened to be in this one particular venue that the um, PR person of Black Eyed Peas was there and saw him and said, "Oh, actually, uh, there might be a song for you." That's that's. There's something in there. There's yeah. some. There's there's some other science about that, isn't there? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What was the what was the drum and bass like, raves like back in there? Because you must have done a PA and a half. Well, yeah. Flipping hell, man. It was like crazy. Because um, to be honest, like I said, I'm a reggae man. I'm coming yeah. from sound system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So I wasn't really in the scene. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But then going to the shows and seeing the response and seeing, yeah, I was like, all right, all right. But then the biggest eye opener for me was 2000 when I went to Canada. Talk to me. Because Canada embraced jungle in- instantly, didn't they? That's when I realised how big I was, mm. how big the song was. Mm. Not me, but how big the song I get was. It. I get it, yeah. I didn't even know. I didn't know it was out in Canada. I'm just yeah. England. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I didn't even know about Europe and all that. No. Yeah. When I went to Canada, 2000, it, me, Frisky Dunn, Terry T, Daya MC, uh, Prophecy, I think Soldier, oh. and I think Conquer Rebel was there as well. Wow. Yeah, it was the first time That's we went. Fleet. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the waves like? Well, they were like crazy. crazy. Yeah. Well, that was the first time I saw maybe like two to three thousand people in a, in a in a party. Yo. I was the headliner. Yeah. Wow. Well, me and Terry, yeah. yeah. Terry T was the headliner. People had banners and bunts and burners. When fire came up, stop sh- it. I'm talking like, yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. I saw my bunts and burners. I was like, no, you're yeah. not yeah. me. You know, the fogwards and all the flames. <laughs> yeah, everything, man. Yeah. Incredible. Nuts. And then when we finished. Um, I'm not gonna lie. It's the longest line I've ever seen of people waiting to sign an autograph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A good twenty, but good twenty people. Wow. More. And then my friend, like Frisky and Dire MC, was signing autographs only because they were there. Yeah. No, they never heard of him before. Yeah, yeah. No, but, but you but signing because they were there. It's because this thing moving, you know. Yeah, no, because they were like, yeah, they were demolition man. Now they Yeah, so. yeah. All associates. Um, yeah. And then from there, we was there. I'm not gonna lie. From 2000 to 2005. We was there every year because that's how my son was born. I met my son's mum out there. Uh, so you really, you stayed, yeah. just, you lost Yeah, it. we was there every year, maybe like three times a year. Every year for that, from 2000 to 2005. No, like every year we was Wow. Yeah. Dude, this all patterns up now because yeah. you were sought after and I remember Vadim just being so enamoured that he'd got you on. And I was like, yo, I need to check this out. It's funny, you know, because Vadim told me um, <laughs> how we met was I was doing a show in France mm. and Yara Brava, his wife at the time. Mm. Yara, yeah. yeah. She was performing. Big up Yara, yeah. yeah sure. She had put, I think, yeah. I had done my thing mm. and then they came on after and I stood there and I was watching, innit? Mm. When we finished, Vadim came and approached me and said, look, boy, mm. yeah. I'm going to do work with you and mm. rare, rare. I'm talking like the next week I was up in his house and... I'm not going to lie, I would say Vadim was one of the first to pay me what I'm worth yeah, at that time yeah. to to voice music. Yeah, he's a good man. Yeah, you know I mean, that was the first time I'm like, okay, yeah. At that time, getting a 500 pound, a grand check for yeah. a song, I was like, yeah. well, wow, okay. This, this really does work. This really know? does work. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? And then Vadim yeah. was, was one of the guys that opened the door and took me, he took first man to take me to Russia. What? Yeah, Yo, I mean, talk to me about your yeah, first trip to he, Russia. Ooh. What a game I, that changer. That was like, it was like, like huh? Yeah. I wasn't expecting this. Yeah. It was like at a club downtown yeah. and I'm seeing people, yeah. you know, the vision I'm getting of Russia yeah. is not what I was like, wow, yeah. like I'm in a club in West End, yeah, downtown yeah. We'll West talk, End. We'll talk. I think you've that got to have a life, to, you've got to discover life. Yeah. You've got to, and, and you that see that, like it's a, crazy. Yeah, I was like, wow. Mm. And then the way they, the way they embraced mm. me as an artist and bra- embraced reggae music and Hip hop and I was like, yo, yeah. but yeah, Vadim took me. Then the first person I went to to Ireland with Dublin and Belfast. Yo, yeah, I mean I that remember, must have been a hoot. No, nah, listen, <laughs> it was. The, I remember the first one of the, the first show we did in Dublin. It was the night when Tyson bit off Holyfield. Oh, to, to yeah. the to the date. Wow, I'm talking. That was the exact night because <laughs> I remember we, being in the newspapers because we come doing. back to the hotel and then the fight and yeah, yeah I mean yeah, but yeah, I'm talking. The the party was so good that the people was like one more. What they were gonna? We had to do it. The security guys like no, you need to do it because yeah, if yeah, you don't yeah. get in one more, it's they're going off. <laughs> when we came off, people was lining up. People was giving me stuff like a girl took off her ch- like she had on this like co- this costume jewelry kind of chain. Yeah, yeah. Took it off and gave me. And next guy was giving. Oh. They oh, loved it. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But yeah, I, I done my. I would say I've done my first kind of tours with Vadim. With Vadim, yeah, yeah, Vadim. And when I when when I went to his house that first day, you know, he said to me, he "Goes, I had a choice between you and Sizzler." And he goes because the way I dealt with him and rare, rare. He, so you he need said, to know. That's what he said. He said so I had a choice between you and Sizzler, and he picked yeah, me. Yeah, of course. Would it make sense? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you go to distance, you go on tour. <laughs> Fucking fantastic. 
performer, amazing voice. I mean, it stands. It's like the all in all in one that you bring. Yeah. And when you when you tell the story of like um, people that come and see you live, and their response like that to give you things and stuff. I mean, I've seen you live. I think there's an element of you know. I mean, you know, you kind of. Not Beatles mania, but it's that it's that <laughs> yeah. thing, right? Yeah, Where yeah, yeah. you've got the star quality. That's it. Yeah, star man, good quality, thanks, man. Good thanks, man. Good yeah. thanks, man. Yeah, man. It's just the way it is. And I think for us, someone like yourself, you know, you're humble. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. That's, that must have been quite a lot first time. To... Yeah, yeah. And I, a lot of people do tell me, like, you know, even because they, they deal with me, they're like, yo, you're different from a lot of artists. I'm like, why? Because yeah, you're humble and... Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We can talk to you and, you know what I mean? Get it's along with yourself. It's a lovely vibe. Like, yeah, well, you know, I'm not bigger than nobody. You know I mean, we're all the same, innit? Yeah, yeah, It's just that I do music. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But that's, <laughs> the, that's the attitude. That's sound system attitude as well. You yeah. know, because it's like a working class kind of vibe. You're picking up the boxes. You're going to be going on stage as well. And yeah. then you've got to put away the sound as well. Like, you, you've got to be on the ground with the people. Yeah, and that's where I came from. Sound yeah. system from 13 till I was 21. Yeah sound system so it was easy for me to be a performer because that's where i got all my my skills if you mm. know it's tipper Irie, mm. all those guys yeah, sweetie sweetie yeah. all of us who come from sound system when it comes to dealing with the crowd and talking to people is that's yeah. where we got our experience from yeah yeah not dissing a lot of these artists but a lot of these new school artists nowadays it's hard for them yeah. they have to they have to get their experience by touring yeah they do whereas yeah i mean we got our experience by touring on sound system, yeah, and then not getting paid. No, <laughs> no, I was the same, but in record stores, go and just grab the mic, do it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? You don't get paid for it. Yeah, but you got the highest hardcore but ears. Yeah. The, the adrenaline yeah. of seeing people responding to you, yeah. and yeah, you know I mean, just yeah. the love, isn't it? That's it. So if it was a money thing, I would have given it up a long time. Yeah, but yeah. it's to know that you can uplift somebody and make them feel good just by word, sound, and power. Yeah, there you go. See exactly that sentiment. That's exactly what it's about. Um, like you say the younger generations at the moment, they don't have that... Oh, they don't have sound system. How do you feel about that? Not enough sounds out there. See, yeah, I guess, yeah, not enough sounds out there. You know what I mean? And if you notice, a lot of these new school artists, a lot of the new generation, mm. they, their practice was battling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know I mean? Particularly for grime and things like that. And freestyles. And freestyles, yeah. Freestyling and the booth and you know athleticism I mean? yeah. within it. I think that's that's how they got their training. But mm. again, you're not interacting with the crowd. No, you're not. See, that's where that's that's the only thing that's missing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the technical, you know, if you if you got a sound and you've got to build the sound, you've got to know, or else you know you don't want things to short circuit or explode. And yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah Getting yeah. electrocuted by by a mic cable or something. You know, yeah, you got yeah. you got a. It's almost like it's like. Um, Bikers, when they take apart their motorbikes to rebuild them, it's almost like knowing the inside and out yeah. of an engine, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't have that. No, no. <laughs> yeah, that's, I know, man. that's curious. Um, but your versatility vocally, you know, you're able to chat, you're able to sing. Um, what do you look for in, in collaborations with producers? What, what kind of... Because you're broad, bro. <laughs> like, like, and then you then you choose broad genres and you're, you're constantly... It's funny, it's like... They come to me, and yeah. a lot of them come to me. It's just, it's whether I'm feeling the vibe or not. Mm. And I'm not the type of person that just goes for one lane. Mm. Mm. I'm like, if I don't know if um, I like decathlon. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, decathlon. Yeah, I do yeah. all that because the hundred meters, the two hundred meters, the eight hundred yeah. meters, the javelin. With a bit of crypto flat factor thrown into it as well. You you know what you, but you lyrically, I will still stay in that lane yeah. with my content. Yeah, yeah. If you notice, I mean, yeah. like my what, like my subject, I don't talk slackness. I don't no. talk about guns. No. I talk stuff that people can relate to. I talk about life. I talk about what I've experienced. I talk That's about so what true. what people have experienced. Yeah. Even if I ain't experienced, I talk about what I've seen, yeah. what I've learned, what I've heard, conversations. Yeah. A word can spark off a lyric. That's so true, you do. But yeah, but if you listen to my lyrical content, yeah. you won't hear me talking about guns because I don't. I've never lived yeah, around guns. Yeah. I'm not going to talk about stuff I don't do. Yeah. I'm not going to talk about stuff I ain't seen. Because it, because it, because the energy takes it there, doesn't it? Exactly. That's and then shit. I'm not going to talk some shit to manifest it to be around me. Yeah. So, 
that's uh, I'm just glad that I've it's not a path that it's not something that I've sat down and thought about mm. it's just happened because mm. that's my path that's my lane that's my journey well you become the identity of the song rather yeah, exactly. than the song dictating what yeah, you are yeah yeah because I don't sit down and think well I don't want to talk about guns I don't want to yeah. because I, I talk how I feel yeah. I speak what I feel yeah, and yeah. what I see in it yeah 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 so that just shows you what type of person I am. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And what type of circle I'm around. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's all in the lyrics, right? Yeah. <laughs> True, isn't it? Why'd you go to America? My dad, um, my dad moved to America when I was 10. Huh, huh. Yeah, but my granddad moved out there in the 50s. Really? Yeah. Um, would you believe it? Must, my granddad passed away 2000. And it's been three years now. Oh, three years my granddad passed peace, away, right? Of course. But, um,. My, I didn't know my, my aunties left uh, this audio interview of my granddad in a family group, a two hours interview. I haven't even listened to the whole of it yet. But I didn't know what my granddad experienced when he first landed in America. Oh, okay. Yeah, he, I yeah to he said that he couldn't believe it. Like when he first, when they first landed, he's driving and he's going through towns and yeah, he's seen people being hanged. Whoa, and um, yeah, and um, basically he's seen um, going to go to the toilet and then when they stop to go to the toilet, you want to go to the proper toilet? No, you have to go to the toilet and when there's no door in the toilet, yeah, all that. So, but I didn't even realise that until he's passed away because I didn't grow up around him. I didn't have that chance of hearing those stories. No. So he's left an audio that I can listen to. I what mean, but I didn't treat. actually grow up around my... I, I met my granddad, actually, 1991. It was the first time I actually met him because he's Jeez. from Jamaica. Yeah. And then when I went to America in 91, that was the first time I met him. But then I saw him every year, every other year. So yeah. 91, I went there, then 92, so then 93, him. I lived there. And that's when I bonded with him, 93 to 94. I bonded with him and then I used to speak to him regularly and see him, obviously, when I moved to Canada. Yeah. I drove to America all the time and, you know what I mean, we saw him. But I moved to America because, at the time, it was funny, there was some madness going on in Tottenham at the time. So what was, it, what was the not, date? Uh, it was 1993, June. So what was going on in Tottenham around there? There was some madness going on there. Like some, I'm not going to call no names, mm. but basically, I could have ended up doing something, you know what I mean? And... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm me and, me and a cousin that. of mine, and it's like my mum felt the energy. He says, you know what? I'm yeah. sending you to America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Within two weeks, my dad said, yeah, send him. Yeah. And you were like, see ya. See <laughs> I'm ya. off. And Stars off. and stripes, here I come. And a couple of the things and things that certain people are going, a couple of them are in, done, are in jail now, life, doing life. And really? Yeah, and yeah, so. So you just you got yeah, out. I, and I, I got out and um, went to live with my dad. And that's when... Um, my dad gave me the name Demolition Man. I didn't wow. like it at first. You didn't like it. I was a bit. I would say I was. I was a bit destructive. So I broke my dad's lamp. <laughs> I fell asleep smoking my spliff and burnt a hole in the sofa. Yeah. I must have broke my dad's watch. <laughs> so he's like, it's like you come for broke up my place. <laughs> so any, anytime we was going somewhere, we'd be like, come Demolition Man, <laughs> and I'd be like, don't call me that man. <laughs> and I never used to like it. I love it. And then my cousin, um, Lito, who's known as Cyrus right now, but at that time he was known as Diamond. Right. Um, he was um, on Justice Sound. Now, his mum lived in Florida, but we had an auntie that lived in New York. So he was that, he went to New York. Whoa. For a little, he, he, he must have said, he would, no, I think he went down there for about six weeks. Right. But he was there for about a week or so. And I was like, yo, I'm in Connecticut, bro. You need to come to Connecticut. <laughs> like, All right. He took a bus. I picked him up at the bus station. And then he came around. And all right. What happened was he had this book of lyrics. And I wasn't a person who was bossy or whatever. But on Justice Sound, basically, it was me and Frisky that was... We was like the head man. Yeah, you know, like you got the, players, yeah. the main players. You know, like you have Pele and Messi and... Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, that, you're yeah, in attack mode. Yeah. yeah, me and Frisky. That was me and Frisky. Mm -hmm. And then Diamond came in after. Right. He, you understand? Yeah. He, yeah, and Diamond got kind of got inspired because of me and Frisky. Yeah. He wasn't really doing music as a youth. He yeah. did love music, yeah. but he weren't really. And then 
So from nowhere, he just started to just do music and started to. He came in the sound. Just and got start, super influence. I just got super influence and wild card. Apparently, what he, he told me goes, boy, demo. When I went to live in Florida for a bit, I was singing your tunes. What from on the sound? He goes, yeah, I was singing your tunes and getting forward and doing this, and then he started to. Build. Well, listen, I'm not gonna lie. I used to sing other people's tunes. I might have taken a couple of lyrics from Saxon and, yeah, you know I mean, you know, a couple of lines, you do it, you yeah. get I me? Mean? And then made up my own lyrics, you but know what I mean? definitely was some self fulfilling prophecy yeah, there then, that he was doing. So, that. what happened now? He's come to America. Yeah. This guy's got a book of lyrics, maybe like 40 lyrics. Them time I'm on my 20 lyrics. Because <laughs> I'm comfortable, innit? Yeah. I've got, I'm not around You know nobody. your position and you're just doing I'm your in thing. America now. Yeah. And I'm around some people yeah. who was doing music and I had a sound system that I could go to on my road. Imagine yeah, yeah. that how fortunate I was living on this road where one of my dad's friend's son had a sound system in their garage. Blessed. And that was like the hangout spot. Every day so I used good. to go and smoke my weed and sit down in the garage yeah, yeah. and we used to record the tapes. <laughs> I even got a voice note, yeah? If I play you a voice note when we're done, before Mad. the interview done of a guy that said, Demo, I remember when you came to Far Rockaway, Queens, I was 15 years old, and he started to DJ some of the lyrics. I've got it this morning. What? Yeah, because he found me on Instagram, and I went. I had an experience with him in Far Rockaway, Queens, when I went to stay at his house for two weeks. That's, yeah. That's <laughs> crazy. So... Um, this happens used, to you a lot, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, so I used to go and DJ and DJ around this one, you know what I mean? And basically, he he um, he um came up and in he, when I heard him doing his music, I'm doing an interview, yeah, I'll call you back, right? When he was doing his music, he started to write intros. Now, what it was, I noticed I had a problem. I can't remember the word I used to say, but when I, I, I wasn't confident with my intros. Okay. When I used to do dub plates, you know the right. dub plates, you do an intro. Yeah. I found, I always used to say, seen, something, something, seen, and I had to try to get out of it. Cyrus came and he changed his name from Diamond to Cyrus the Virus. So he had Diamond, the girl's then best friend, but then he had Cyrus the Virus. Mm. And it's like, it was a, it's like this was a new guy. Wow. He had some lyrics and then he was writing down his intros, bruv. So when we're doing dubs, I'm doing dubs and I'm struggling to do my yeah, intros. Yeah, he's yeah. just flowing, flowing, doing his intros. Because he's like, got it all patterned up. Because he's got his all patterned up. And I'm not going to lie, it inspired me to get to sharpen up my thing because yeah. you know when yeah. you're comfortable, yeah. but then you can see a player mm. that's mm. reached up to your level and getting better. Healthy. And getting healthy. Mm. You like it, but yeah. you that sharp, helped me sharpen up my tool. Yo. So then we must have went somewhere, done a little old. It was a what you call it, a block party. Nice. Them times I never knew about block party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In England, yeah. we don't know what block party is. Block party is when they block off New the York road. Do it block off the different. road and rare, rare. Done a little thing. I done my thing. When I came off now, one of my dad's friends come up to me and goes, Yo, you see when you sing, you might hear this song bad, but you sing, you start DJ, you demolish the place. Mm. And then later, me and Cyrus was at my yard. And I'm thinking, hold on, that man said to demolish the place. Mm, mm. I was like, rah. So if I leave it as Wayne Young, mm. but alias Demolition Man. Mm, mm, so Demolition Man is when I DJ and demolish yeah, the place. And you Wayne go. Young is when I there started doing the singing. So that's how I come with my wow. name is Wayne Young alias Demolition Man. You understand? That's crazy. So that's how I came up with the alias, Demolition Man. I said, you know what? I'm going to keep that because my dad gave me the name Demolition Man. Man said I demolished the place when yeah. I DJed. Which makes sense. Makes sense. I'll just leave it as Wayne Young, because then you had Bounty Killer the Outlaw. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm mean, sorry, you had Terry Gansey the Outlaw, Bounty Killer the, the, the yeah. Warlord. You understand? Yeah. Everyone had a little alias. Yeah, yeah. So that's when I had my alias Demolition Man. And then I'd done my first big. It weren't big, it was like three it was three shows. Mm. But the artist who I was with was big because one of the artists who was the headline of the show, he was the biggest artist in the world at the time for the reggae dance hall. No bounty killer. Stop. I got to tour with Bounty Killer, Lady Patra, Roundhead and Ninja Kid. And that was in Washington, Ma Boston, Massachusetts, and Hartford. Because what? what it was, my dad's friend was the A and R for Lady Patra. My dad's friend Byron Jr. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So how he, and wow. you know what he did? He was Byron used to come down from New York and link my dad. And Byron had his his house in in Hartford, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. But he used to work at the office with okay. specialists okay. who was Shabaranks' manager. That's mad. Specialist, and he was Patra's manager, and he was the one that was running that whole thing. Specialist, and Banky. Oh, yeah, dude. 
you were just walked into an opportunity so to dive. In. Well, I didn't know I was walking. In. I just knew this guy Byron, who was my dad's friend, and he heard I could do music. But guess what he did? He called me from the office when he was with Banky and them. Didn't tell me. Put me on loudspeaker, loud and he goes, "Yo, give me your lyrics now." <laughs> On yeah, phone. on the phone. Yeah, he goes, yo, I'm just there in the office. I mean, I talk about you. Give me some, give me your lyrics. I gave him three lyrics. I gave him a sing J style, a sing song, and then a fast tongue DJ thing. Yo. And then the next day, my dad goes, the yo. The third one, they miss, you must have nailed it in the bag. And then my dad said to me, yo, you know what Byron did to you? I was like, what? He goes, you know, you was on the speakerphone and Banky and then yeah. they, they put you on that show. I was like, which show? Said the bounty killer and things. So I was like, that's don't lie. Crazy. And that was the first time bounty killer came to America. Wow. That yeah, must have he been was a riot. Now he's the same age as me. I was 22. So he was 22, bro. Yeah. Yeah. So he, so it was funny. So the first show we did was in Washington. Yeah. The show was rammed. People upstairs. And so you had me, this guy, Honorable Apache. Mm. Then you had this white guy. White, what was this white guy's name? Billy, Willy One Blood. Willy One Blood. Yeah, because he's even, even end up in a Google I people. Google. I saw his name was Willy One Blood, bro. <laughs> they put him. They put so they put me on. No, they put Willy One Blood on first. So when Willy One Blood come out, he's like white rasta. Mm -hmm. So he's come out now. No word of a lie. He must have been up there. About a minute and a half. Mm -hmm. Boo! Yeah, yeah. Then a different one thing. They just booed him off. Yeah. And it's not like he was rubbish. No. How, they gave him a minute and a half. All right. Then they brought out Honorable Apache. He must have been up there for about a minute. Really? Same thing. Boo! Uh, they only want one thing. They only want they, the one. They brought me out. Bro, I must have been up there 10 flipping seconds, bro. <laughs> I was like, yeah! Boo! <laughs> <laughs> they yeah. said, nah, yeah, yeah, we yeah. can't have this. So the compares come out <laughs> now. And he's like, right. So where are you Oh no, I ninja kid. No. Oh no, I rode it. No. Oh no, I lead the patra. No. I want one. Party, party, party. Bro, yeah, that's my first boo. I've never been booed before. Yeah, that was yeah, my yeah, first yeah. boo, but I knew it was a biased boo. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. I went, I didn't feel too bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's what everybody else was getting personal. Yeah. It went nothing. I knew it went nothing personal. First time we'd ever been in the states. But it's the first time I'd ever like. So what's happened now? The lights went off. Bruv, I swear, I'm sure people who didn't even smoke had a lighter. It's like Jesus or step in the place. Yeah, yeah. Just you just lit said, the whole roof. Ooh, yeah. Because <laughs> it's a bad, isn't it? <laughs> people dead. Like I said, you see, when he walked out, yeah. Jesus Christ, I forgot about my boo. Really? <laughs> I was oh. at the backstage. I, I don't like, doubt that for a second. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's almost like the hype, believe the hype this year. He effed up the place. Really? I'm not going to lie, he smashed it. But then this is what I respect. He turned around and he said, "Yo, yeah, man, I love the res I love the response and rare. This is my first time I'm coming there. But what I don't love is how you boo the people them. Mm. We can't boo the people them. Or them for start. Mm. You got to mm. give them a chance. Yeah. They got to come from somewhere. You can't yeah. do that, man. And you yeah. know he did. He called us all back out so we could do the check. <laughs> Rated him for that me. is the coolest fucking story, yeah, dude. Yeah, you know I mean, we're all like not the whole tune, but everyone could come and do that. They did a cool verse and whatever. That is and so. Then, that that you know just mean? affirms, you know, hero status. Yeah. That's that's what it's about. Yeah, man. That's why. I, yeah, I rated him for that. And then from there we went to Boston, Massachusetts. And then was it vibes? And that was nice. I got a nice little vibe. But would you believe? I think. Apart from Bounty. They said that I mash up the show. But because mm. I was in Hartford, Hartford was where my dad lived. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's like a strong Jamaican community there. Oh yeah. So when I came on, half of the people, half of the place already knew me. Oh, nice. Yeah, so yeah, I had yeah, a yeah, yeah, big support, yeah. you know what I mean? And yeah, yeah. yeah, I mashed up the place. That vibe. Mashed it up. That vibe. Even Patrick, what I done, I done a, I done a little thing. Cause Patra had this song got I got a real man problem. Mm. Gotta find a guy you can solve there. Yeah, Something cool, in a real good job. So I done a lyric. Love Patra, that tune. I said, Patra says she have a real man. Problem demolition, my wife is all them. I'm going to make a scheme and ball in a whole heap of different ways. If you ever give her a shoot and shoulder, she not going to stop by till it's over. Yo, that's a mash up the place. So when she come out, she called me back on. Oh, I say, hey, the English boy. <laughs> yeah, 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 that was there. Um, that's where. 
the name Demolition Man got the stamp. Really took yeah, shape. Took shape from there. Oh, dude, like your life is great. Yeah, man. Anyone that's what I mean, you know, <laughs> crazy. Bro, I could write a book. I could do a documentary. Yeah. I could do a whole f- movie. <laughs> your, your granddad's audio. That's one hell of a podcast yeah. waiting to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is. That yeah. is definitely. When you definitely. think about the, the the lineage of your your ancestral path and yeah, because I didn't yeah. know that. My granddad was Portuguese, had Portuguese in him, mm, and mm. I didn't know. I mean, I didn't even, I've, I've just originally thought my granddad was from St. Thomas, but no, he wasn't. He lived, I was in Mandeville and then he went to St. Thomas. Mm, mm. But yeah, he had Portuguese. I know. always find that interesting, you know, the timeline. Yeah. You know, my timeline goes goes back to Africa. Yeah. Only, only by like my, I think it's like my third, like my great, great, great granddad. Oh, okay. So it's, it's yeah. distant. But yeah, the, yeah. The, the Portuguese side of what you're saying is like, yeah. it, you know, you don't realise how deep rooted we are in this thing. Yeah, <laughs> you know, to have an audio tape of that, absolute diamond, and yeah. uh, that was that kind of that kind of spawned your whole trip to America. Yeah, right trip now. to America, and I've, uh, basically, I've got brothers out there, and I've got seven sisters and two brothers. Wow, there's three, or four of us over here, but the rest of all live in America. Oh man, that, it, yeah, I so, mean that's a blessing. Yeah, so I've got. So have you got a passport? You got an American passport? No, I haven't. I haven't got an American passport, but um, I'm actually gonna um, file for my Jamaican and my Bayesian passport. Oh yeah, passport. you should do that. That's definitely. What I'm do, you know what I mean, yeah, yeah. So, I'm with, uh, any excuse for a new passport. My dad's part. My dad passed away 2017, mm-hmm. but like I'm still close to my my family. Yeah. Uh, like I said, when I was in Canada, I used to drive eight hours from <laughs> Canada to. To Connecticut, yeah, yeah. Was so Connecticut's just outside of it. It's kind of it's in, yeah, yeah. It's like an hour, two hour drive from New York. New York. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and what was what was so good? My son's mum at the time in Canada, her family lived fifteen minute drive from my dad's, um, from my dad in Hartford. Hmm. Her family lived in a place called New Britain, yeah. which is about fifteen minute drive. Yeah, yeah, from yeah. From Hartford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when we used to drive, she used to go. She used to go to meet. Leave me at her family. Mm. I used to obviously, and then we we'll stay two days at her family, then spend the rest with my dad and drive back to Canada. So my dad would drive to Canada because we had a, he had his mum's sister lived in Canada. Mm. My auntie Bev. Yeah. Whereabouts was that Toronto? Way she lived in Mississauga. That's where she lives right now. Really? She still lives there. You also now. still got Canadian families. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, she's from Jamaica, but really? she lives in Canada. That's amazing. Yeah, with my cousin Nadine. Uh, yeah, my cousin Greg used to live there, but he's back. They'll be watching this. No, I have no doubt about that. It's a big up. Yeah, man, I'm gonna make them see it today, yeah, mate. Yeah, we're getting all the names dropping out. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, I, I feel like it makes you more worldly. I mean, we were lucky that we were touring at such a young age in our careers. Yeah, I think both you and me share the same walk as that. Yeah, I mean, it makes you more definitely you makes know? you more grounded and open, yeah. open mind to see how other people live as well, especially yeah. Europe. Well, when you said Russia, yeah. it's like people have this preconceived idea about what Russia is. It's actually so relatable. Yeah. Do you mean it? Yeah. And, and that goes for anywhere. And, yeah, and, man. You know. I spent, um, and then after that now, I'm, I'm, I would say, so I would say the three people that's made me see a lot of places. The first one was Vadim. Mm-hmm. But there was this other guy before him I can't even flip remember his name now. It's been so long. I haven't worked mm. with him, bro. He was one of the first promoters to bring me to France a lot. Oh, so he's a promoter? Yeah, yeah he was yeah. a promoter from France. But then Vadim, I would say Vadim opened the doors mm. for, to a lot of places, yeah, working yeah. with him. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And then the next person, Jackie Murder. Jackie Murder? Yeah, Jackie Murder took me to a I lot mean, of places. So, 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 yeah, I, I, done, I, done a, I done a month in Russia with Jackie Murder. Yo, this Russian thing. Yeah. Yeah. We done Ukraine. Um, Lithuania, Ekaterinburg. There's some beautiful yeah. places, bro. Yeah, man. Oh, I love Lithuania. Yeah, Lithuania. Oh, yeah, Lithuania. Beautiful. Well, to be honest, Lithuania, to be honest, no. So I didn't do Jackie Mur- I didn't do Lithuania with Jackie Murder. I done Lithuania with Psychophoid. <laughs> you know DJ Psychophoid? <laughs> no, you get a vow, bro. Yeah, like... DJ Psychophoid. He, I went, it, it was a thing called The Kings. Mm. Bro, the response I had, even the guy who owned the club said, his club is not a place that has that kind of music. It's more of a live band club and mm. metal mm. and mm-hmm. rock. Mm-hmm. He said, it's the first time I've ever seen a headliner ram my place like this. He goes, you're welcome to come back here anytime. Oh. Gave me his number. Gave, he said, he came up to me and said, yo, you are amazing. I've never seen like one person. But what it was, Lithuania had been waiting 10 years to see me. Yeah, apparently, because yeah, 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 yeah. they even um, the guy who introduced us said, "Boy, you know, it's ten years. These people have waiting, been waiting for you to come down here." 
they're so loyal as well. Them, them audiences from Eastern Europe and that you know that that, that kind of more yeah. Russian Soviet area. Yeah, they are so loyal. Yeah, man. Yeah. They they hold they hold you yeah, in their man. hearts. Yeah, man. So Cro- that's what that is, isn't it? Yeah, man. Croatia, yeah. Romania, all these yeah. places, all because of fire. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's one fire fu- lights the fire. One song. <laughs> And then was obviously when I get there, they 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 know my other catalog. Yeah, you know what I mean, because yeah. I would say it's not until maybe like early two thousand and two thousand and six, yeah. seven, where my reggae music started to come out. Because yeah. everybody thought I was just a junglist, yeah, 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 <laughs> not yeah, knowing that yeah. the, my, the my, roots. my roots is reggae. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. So. Again, I think it's just testament to your versatility. Do you ever have that? Trouble in versatility, choosing the kind what kind of shows to do because obviously you've got loads of different genres. No, I don't. You I, just move to next to next to next. To. Yeah, I don't have a problem because I it's it's half and half now. Mm. It's either jungle or reggae. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, jungle or reggae. It'll be lane. <laughs> <laughs> jungle or reggae, man. You know what I mean. So, um, I'm not gonna lie. I'm I'm glad that because before it was predominant jungle. Mm-hmm. Now, like I said, it's half and half. Yeah. And it's funny because I will go to a jungle show yeah. and they're shouting out, oh, do you circle up the score? Yeah, they know yeah, all yeah. my reggae songs. You know what I mean? But then when I go to a reggae show, I know I have to do fire. <laughs> Isn't that curious? It's funny. It's, yeah, no, I think some of it is because, you know, when you break up a, a reggae night or a drum and bass night with something that just feeds a, a bit more of a, a, a an interval of, yeah. of different... So much different for the years. Yeah, they love it more. Yeah, it's yeah. so curious. They love it, it, man. Last time we was together was at uh, Aerosol Leke's fundraiser. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Rest yeah. In yeah. Peace, yeah um, that was fantastic, peace, wasn't it? That was one yeah, hell of a night. Yeah, 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 yeah. We had a good time. Yeah, man. Sure did. Wholesome. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah it was. It was. Yeah, man. A lot of legends in the building. I see demo coming. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I had to come and represent, man. Yeah, yeah. represent. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Um. Highlights of your career so far? Highlights. I would say one of the first was performing in Africa, 1998. Um, that was with me, Sweetie Irie. Yeah, big up Sweetie. Lorna Asher. Um, was it Celia Collins? And, mm. Yeah. And Richie Nicotine Davis. Wow. And I think mm. Richie Davis and Sweetie was the headliners. Yeah. But then I done this song called Soldier on the Battlefield, okay. and they had heard it, cause it's like a three months promotion. So you do like a television, you do a TV advert. Yeah. So it's like a TV commercial right. like for the local TV station, right. and then you do we done a live interview, but over the phone, <laughs> and people call in, and the Ekimog soldiers, <laughs> the ones that were defending, yeah. cause there was a war going on in yeah. Sierra Leone at That's that time, right. ninety eight. Gotcha. Yeah. And the rebels had taken over. I remember this. So the Ekimog yeah. soldiers must have heard my song, bruv. No way. I swear, a couple <laughs> of them, one of them called in the show. And when they called in the show now, we're all in the... So it's me, Sweetie, Lorna, mm. Asha, and they were talking. And they goes, hey, we want to speak to Demolition Man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, right, okay. So I'll come on and say, hey, Demolition Man. We love you. Yeah. I'm like, oh, thanks. No, so, so, so I said, yeah. They said, no, but we want to ask you something. We love your song, Soldier on the Battlefield. <laughs> I'm like, okay, but why you say you're a soldier on the battlefield and there's no war in your country? <laughs> 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 I swear they said. So I said, I'll tell you what it is. It's like just to get to the studio is like an everyday battle. Yep. Just to make money and yeah, survive yeah, yeah. over here is like an everyday battle. Yeah. You know what I mean? To get food some days is like an everyday battle. So. You have to be a soldier yeah, yeah. on the back of field. They went said. for it. And they went, oh, okay. <laughs> Demolition man, we love you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I swear. So cool. And just because of that now, when we got there, by the time we got there, they said, boy, they like, you have to be the headliner, bruv, because your true soldier on the battlefield is mashing up the place. That was the first time I cried on stage, bruv. Tears on Dre. Imagine that. Wow. It was in Freetown, Sierra Leone, at the big stadium. And it was a peace concert. And uh, we've come on and... It's the first time I've performed, and what well, it is because we're not a band. They used yeah. to band. You have to had to extra dance. Go I had some extra. dancers, yeah. so you have to go extra, bruv. I'm talking no lie. You see, by like, I had thirteen songs to perform. You see, by like the tenth tune, yeah. 
Bruv, I was so hot. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing the DIJ in bro. Fuck have I started here? So I was like, bro. <laughs> so I've got water now. You see what I'm drinking? <laughs> my last tune was Soldier on the Battlefield. That was my plan. Bruv. They were like, they didn't even want to hear nothing else now. No, no, no. They just started to sing, Soldier, 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 Yo. Soldier, Soldier. We want to hear so. I was like, okay. I was glad. I said, like, right, miss out the rest of the tune. Just give me Soldier on the Battlefield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You see when I started to sing it, bruv? Um, they started singing it? They started to sing it. It's like tears of joy came out. Bruv. And it's like I, I was kneeling down at the time. Yeah. And it's like I got so, I got slightly emotional that yeah. I couldn't even sing the tune. Mm-hmm. And I had to pull up. And then one of the soldiers came up. Crazy. And he came up and he put his hand on me and he's like, Demolition man, don't cry, we love you. And the whole crowd was like, we love you. And then the next one came up <laughs> and then I stood up and I was like, I goes, no, nah, respect. I goes, so I said, you know, you'll have to give... I said, you'll have to show a lot of appreciation to these soldier guys yeah. because they're out here protecting you. And I yeah. go to the guy, how old are you? And he said, he's 21. She saw this guy, wow. a big yeah. guy on a big gun. Yeah, time yeah. I'm 30 yeah. something, bro. 21, the next guy is 21. But yeah, that was a. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, is a memorable yeah. show for me. Yeah. And then the next one is performing on Sting in Jamaica, 2012. Mm. Yeah, I got to perform. That's on huge. Yeah, that's that. That's because again, through a friend of a friend, basically, I started to voice for Peckins in uh-huh. 2010, and when I was in Canada, um, I had a tune with Taurus Riley. Nice. Yeah. Um, um, since I found you, that was it, and then I had this other song. Oh. So it was playing on the radio. It was number one for eight weeks in Canada on the university radio station. Yeah. And then um, this guy, Rosa, apparently he's like, flipping out. He's like, how would I say? He was the first man to bring Radigan to Canada. Wow. Okay. So he's yeah. like up there. He's the first man to bring Radigan. He was, he's like Stone Loves, they're like they're booking, one of their booking agents. I think he was oh, the so first he's man. Like the, he's the I main think, man. I think he was one of the first man to have a soul sound mm. in Jamaica. Lovely. Where he used to play music to soul's music because he sounds his soul's name he sounds named Soul to Soul. Mm-hmm. And okay. now when you listen to his dub plates, if he hasn't got the artist, it's because the artist passed away. But he's got majority of the foundation studio one artists and treasure art artists oh. them on dub. He's got them on dub, bro. Yeah. If he ain't got them, it's because they passed away. <clears throat> yeah. So what he did, he had this thing, right? In Jamaica, you got this thing called um Olit. They call it Olis. So on a Sunday, it's in Rallington Town in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's in the same place, but the last time I went, it was in Rallington Town. Mm. And it's where they just play nothing but old music. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, Studio One and like... The, uh, oh, like, like a whole later. afternoon or something. Like, like yeah. a whole night. It's like basically it's like a dance, isn't it? So that's from, so cool. And it's, 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 you're seeing young people there, older, whatever, but that's in Jamaica called Olids. Wow. So they all play, you ain't hear no music pass... Maybe the eighties. Nothing past eighties. Really? It's just eighties. Like old and, dubs. Yeah. Old crackly dubs. Yeah, old dubs, old songs. Mm. I mean. Mm. Yeah, you might hear some maybe early eighties music. Mm-hmm. I think. Early you ain't getting nothing past the nineties, yeah, no, I think. No, That's no. what it is. Nothing past the nineties. That sounds that sounds lovely. Yeah. And he's got he created that now in Canada. He had a restaurant stroke bar. And every Sunday he used to have that at his restaurant one bar. He heard my song on the radio. And phone up the radio DJ, Kerry Mullins. I said, Kerry, I want that tune on dub. Who's the artist? What? So she linked me and said, yo, you need to voice some dub for this guy. I told him $200. So yeah. I said, all right then. I phoned a friend of mine who was like my sound, was like my, my bonified. He was a man that, he had a sound, mm-hmm. but his sound was like, his sound system was well known that they would hire out his sound every week. Three different banquet halls, they're using his sound system. They've got sound system, Jeez. it's so big yeah. and it was so crisp. It's like a sound in Jamaica. Really? It's like you're in a studio when you're in this. So he's working like three times a day. Yeah, like. every, every week, yeah. He's, uh, he had a sound called Step of Choice. Their sound was big and there's oh. a, quite a few of them, but they had, a, they had really? enough equipment. So he used to just go around and when he voices me, he would play it to all the sounds them and make me get work. <laughs> yeah, he would, sometimes he wouldn't even voice me. He'd be like, he would go and see a couple of the men, yo, me just voice five, five demo tune, you know, no one's on tune. And he would just make me get work. Because of him, I helped pay some of my bills, mate. That's incredible. In Canada. So, I called him, I goes, yo, you know who Rosa is? He goes, Rosa? 
Soul to soul. I was like, yeah, he goes, you need to voice some dub for that yeah. man there. That man there, I the man. I'm yeah. like, yeah? How much I charge him? I said, boy, Carrie Mullins told me to charge him. He said, no. Don't do that, man. Charge him. Yeah. That man there, but that I got his number and I called him. He bought 20 dubs, bro. Because he heard my studio one To the one value catalog. of each that he was said. I just charged him £100 each dub. That's what I charged him. So he just 20? spent, yeah, he spent two grand one time. He just went bam because uh, he heard the one song, yeah. but then he goes, "You got any more?" That time I had just voiced fifty-two songs for Peckins, bro. Wow. In and a month, just getting paid off that as well. So he just said, "Yeah, any any up me want to do all of them pan dub because I want all of them." The dub game's real. So he bought twenty one time, and then he goes to me, "You know what? Do one of them dubs for Repo Stone Love." Crazy. And then he goes, "When you do it, bring it down to my restaurant." So me and my son's mum at the time went down to the restaurant. And he had give us some food. Food was amazing. And Weepo walked in. No way. Yeah. And he goes, Weepo, this is the youth that I tell you about, man. Right, right. So I gave him a CD. Because he said to me, put some tunes on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, he played the dub, but then he played the first tune that was with me and Taurus Riley. He heard it and he said, yo, yo, come back in the shape, man. And he goes, yo, that tune, bud. He must have went back. You see, by the next week, Rosa sent me a CD. No, he said, come and pick up this CD. And it was Weddy Weddy. And he had played the tune in Weddy Weddy. He goes, oh, man, I played this tune where you from England. Ras demo. And, and he played it at Weddy Weddy and, oh. and recorded it on CD and sent it to Rosa. What? Now, with, with, within two weeks of knowing Rosa, yeah. this is where I was getting to the point now, because yeah. I said I performed on Sting. Yeah. Rosa said to me, you got family in Jamaica? I was like, yeah. He's like, you want to go and perform on Sting? Nah, man. I'm like, yeah, of course. Within two weeks of knowing this, man, he paid for my flight. For me and my son's mum, we went to Trinidad first, then we went to Jamaica and I performed on Sting. See, and then you tell people <laughs> there is opportunities out there, you make your opportunities. This is exactly how, this is 101 yeah, of how he, you do he it. He paid for my flight and because I had met this guy, Fire Lion out there, Fire Lion knew everybody. Yeah. I ended up staying with Frisco Kid, ancient monarchy at Frisco Kid's house. He, goes, he used to call him Grandad, he'd call him and say, yo Grandad, I'm an artist enough for England, I'm come over there. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, we can stay with you. And Frisco Kid treat me like, yeah, Ian Chamanaki, big up to him, man. Yo. Me and my, uh, my, my missus at the time stayed at his house for five days and he dropped me to Sting mm. and, yeah, I went on Sting and I mashed up the place. Incredible. Yeah, I, and I had a choice to pick, to work with the bands or work with my tracks. I preferred to work with my tracks because yeah. I didn't have time to rehearse with the bands. I didn't have no backing singers. And you know my, mm. you know my songs entail a lot of harmony. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And me just singing by myself with the yeah, with the band, it's yeah, not gonna it's give it the full energy that you want. That I want. Yeah. So I just done with my tracks in it, and, and it's f- and it's funny. I gave them three different styles again. You know me already, so <laughs> I gave them um, the sick with him in jungle. I went up there done a fast really? thing. That must have blown their. Heads then I went up there done a dance hall thing, and then my last tune was a one drop reggae kind of style. But it's funny when we got there, it was just me Righty. and my empress at the time. He dropped us off. Taurus Riley was walking through at the time. And imagine, we'd done the tune, but he hadn't met me. It was Peckins took the vocals and I had voiced my piece. But when I told him, introduced myself, I said, I'm the you that voiced the tune with you for Peckins. And he's like, what? Because yeah. Peckins told me that he loved my music so bad, he wanted my tunes on his phone to take back to Jamaica. Really? Yeah, Taurus did. Because I harmonised the tune. Ha- Taurus didn't harmonise it. Mm. It's the tune with me and Taurus. I had harmonised it. Peckins didn't even know, expect me to harmonise it. And I harmonised it. And Taurus goes, damn, I will harmonise it. He's saying, no, the, the artist by the tune video. So anyway, nice. when I was going through to go to perform on Sting, if you saw all the hard faces. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Screw up. yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got there now. Obviously, you know when you get to a place, <laughs> you want to scope it out, yeah. see the vibe, maybe build my little spliff, yeah, yeah. call a vibe. When I've got there now, I'm walking and a woman goes, where are you? I said, Ras Demo. All right, you next. Just like that? Just like that, bruv. No time to be like spliff, nothing. The, the po- doctor's the, surgery. The <laughs> artist was maybe had two tunes left. Really? Yeah, you next. So you see when I was walking up now, every man feels stiff. Oh, Bend God. Up. I'm like, all right. So I've gone up there now, done the first tune. I'm like, oh, yeah, we get a nice response. Done the second tune now, like, what? Got a nice response. And the woman now, who's the compare, yeah. she come done now, like trying to come and walk me off now, isn't it? So I'm like, all right, then I don't mind coming off because I've done well. I know I did yeah, yeah. good. As I'm walking off now, I forgot my drink. 
by the monitors. So I've walked back to get my monitors and then some to get my drink. And someone's gone, one more, one more. You see, from that one started, it's a whole, it was, it's like a one chain more. reaction. One, yeah, man, give me one more, one more. So I was like, what? Let me get them one more, man. And the woman's like, all right then. So she had to walk back off. I gave them one more and I done this tune. Wag one, wag one. By the time I'd done that tune, I'll come here, come on, singing. Wag one. Start a show. One, one now, if you're good, there's a guy, what he does, he takes pictures of you, puts it in a frame. Oh. And he links you. And it's up to you to buy it if you want. But he only does that if you're a good artist. Frisco Kid had around about 10 of them in his really? house. Really? So I linked the man and I did buy it because he I yeah. gave him I gave him my number. I said, yeah. well, I can't get it now, but I'll he's come the and man get it. Yeah, yeah. That, that so, that bespoke thing. Yeah, he's he's been doing it for years apparently. Yeah. He's because when I looked at Frisco Kids one, it's like from in the the early nineties, go up, and wow. it's all from this same man. Yeah. Wow. So when Frisco said to me, "Yo, you get a picture from that man there," he goes, "That man there rated you." I yeah, was like, yeah. "Why?" He goes, "Cause that man they don't do that for anybody unless he rated you wow. or you're a big artist." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hall of Fame <clears throat> kind of shit. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, Sting was, wow. I mean, and then I would say Canada on the jungle side was an eye opener for me. Yeah, that yeah. first, first, that first sounded show. It. That sounded crazy. Yeah. As I said, like Canada, North America, they, they, they embraced the jungle thing pretty much in parallel times as, yeah. as England. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's a funny career, isn't it? Sure is, man. Yeah. That's why I got into producing and producing my own music. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, piano player, guitarist, drummer, mm. school reader. I mean, the world's your oyster, my brother. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, man. Do you, do you feel like there's way more to learn? Oh, yeah. Because, look, all right, I've got my label now, Inama Yard Productions, which I started 2005 mm. in Canada. Would you believe it's only now I'm releasing music? Mm -hmm. So that it took me this is take it's taken all right, so two thousand and five to two thousand and ten I would say was the, the molding stage of just billing music. Mm. Then two thousand and ten I got a manager, mm -hmm. which is third eye records. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. That's my partner label as well. From two thousand and ten up until two thousand and fifteen mm. was tidying up the ship because my music was all over the place. People yeah. collecting for me who shouldn't be Bit of housework. publishing and yeah. getting it all under one, yeah. so my children could collect my legacy. Yeah, yeah. And real talk, yeah. You know I mean, it's so, mad how it's mad how the industry likes to, you know, all these different fault lines that you don't know where money's going. It's good to get that. It takes time, but it's good to get that. Time. So from two thousand and ten, I would say up until maybe two thousand and fifteen, sixteen. Wow. My manager helped shape that up. Wow. You understand? And I would say from two thousand and nineteen up until now is me sharpening up my production mm, skills. Mm. 2015, we released that album on my label, which was all my own production, but that was a month before streaming took over. Mm. <laughs> Income streaming. That was a month before streaming yeah. really <laughs> come and took over. You know, before it was downloads and... Be no, streaming... Lime wire. Like, yeah. yeah. No, streaming came and just... Whoop, whoop, off it goes. So it's like my album became a, 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 a like a, a needle in a haystack, yeah, yeah, a yeah, stone yeah, in the yeah, ocean. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I can actually re-release that now yeah. and rebrand it and reproduce it. And yeah. that's what, so that's what I'm going to do because it's only now, even some of the songs I have to do a video for because the distri distribution company has said, look, that song, Job To Do, is going up. You mm -hmm. need to do a video for it. Yeah, 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 that yeah. song, Go On So, it's yeah. like people have gone now and seen certain yeah. works. The analytics are different now, so you can catch are, a real gauge so, of what's popular. So that's what mm. this is coming. And then the 23rd of February, I released a song called Everything Bliss. Yeah, I know. It sounds sick. And I would say that's my first proper yeah. release from yeah. the label now. So it's just... The cover's dope as well. I love the cover. Give thanks, man. Yeah, yeah give thanks. That's it's Big J. Wicked brand. GCP. Yeah, Big yeah. J and them guys. That's yeah. the guys who do my video on them and their guys. They're wicked. So right now it's just... One thing I'm lacking is videos. I don't have a lot of videos in Thank under my video. belt. So right now, I've just got to mm. get my videos up and I'm just going to be consistent right now and I can release every month if I want. So I mean, sick. And now my son is singing. My son wow. sings, sing Jay-Z, he raps. He's got a kind of like... I would say my son's like a new school Craig David. Nice. My friend calls him Gangster Craig David. Because <laughs> he can do drill, he can do house, he can do... Dance all. Oh, he man. can do 
The world's he's a like, oyster, he's man. like me. For young people, the world is yeah, the oyster. He's like me. He's very versatile. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. he's, a, he's, again, he's like me. He's lyrical content. He has, he's grown, he's been grown up a certain way. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't sing nah. what the norm sings. Nah, he does different. He's different. He might say a little one, little one swear word in his tune, yeah. but he's not that. He's not built like that. He's not built like that. And that's not because of me. That's just how he's grown. Yeah. But then he hears my lyrics and he hears my things. And I just said to him, one thing I did say to him, my advice was to him, don't sing what you, don't sing what you don't live. No, that's right. You know what I mean, just sing what you live and what you see and yeah. what you experience. And just Very sing important. that. And Trouble will come it. back to you if you do. He's 26 and he's better than me when at uh, 26 and when I was 26. 26. Yeah, fun. he's amazing though. And then my little six year old in Canada, she's the next one. She's starting to make up her own songs and she has a voice already. See, the future's bright, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> Label, new music, remade music. New artistry. And I do come personal training as well now. Your personal <laughs> training as well? <laughs> yeah, we did it from It's when the videos comes man. in, you see. Like, you know, <laughs> it's like, you'll be ready for the videos. <laughs> <sighs> Raz yeah, Demo. Yeah, yeah. It's been a pleasure chatting to you, my brother. Come on, bro. Absolutely smashed yeah, it out. Got, yeah, man. Come on. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes. Demolition Man. What more do you need? Huh? <laughs> Proof in the pudding that uh, staying innovative and creative is what keeps a career alive and moving. 2024 and onwards. Anyway, Killer Keller podcast, out like was out of fashion, all right? Crime don't pay, but neither do they, all right? Don't talk to any I wouldn't, people. Stay lucky. Peace. Peace. <laughs> that was so sick. <laughs>